Yeah, so here we have a question on when do all gas constant. Let's see what the question says. Arrange the following in decreasing when the walls constant A values. Okay, we have two when do all constant A and B. A is for intermolecular force of attraction and B is for the size of the molecule, right? So, and you have H2O, CO2 and argon gas. Okay, okay, perfect. So, basically A depends on the inter molecular or you can say inter particle force of attraction right if you have more force of attraction amongst your molecules or amongst your atoms then your a value is going to be higher and higher right okay so let's check for the inter particle force of attraction in h2o co2 and argon one by one so h2o as we know has hydrogen bonding right and if you if you compare hydrogen bonding is a weak van der Waals force of attraction but it is the strongest weak van der Waals force of attraction right it is on the stronger side and how does it form hydrogen bonding i'll show you this there is a hydrogen partial positive charge and oxygen with a partial negative charge and there is an attraction in between them right so this is your hydrogen bonding in water move on to co2 Basically, CO2 is a linear molecule, although the bonds are polar, but because of the symmetry of the molecule, the molecule becomes non-polar, okay? And this is a polyatomic molecule, so the polarizability of the molecule is high, although it has van der Waal force of attraction, or you can say London forces, right? To be specific. Why? Because this is a neutral molecule this is a non-polar molecule okay if you talk about argon again argon has london forces right but because argon is a monoatomic atom or gas then because of that the polarizability of argon is less as compared to co2 co2 has polar bonds so it, it will make dynamic dynamic dipole right but the molecule is non-polar so it has london forces but the polarizability, if you compare the polarizability of CO2 with the argon, then CO2 is going to be more polarizable. Polarizability factor is high for CO2. Why? Because it is polyatomic, it has non-polar bond. So, if you, if you compare them according to, according to the interparticle force of attraction, then the order is going to be H2O, because it has the hydrogen bond, which is stronger as compared to London forces. And then you have CO2. This is polyatomic polarizability is high and then argon will be the least right so this is the order of intermolecular force of attraction and same is the order of the a value the van der Waal a constant so if you compare with the options then option a is exactly matching with what we have calculated so option a is going to be the correct answer to this question and with that we conclude this question thank you so here we have a very beautiful question on de Broglie's wavelength. Let's see what the question says. If proton, electron and alpha particle, okay, are moving with same kinetic energy, okay, then the order of their de Broglie's wavelength is, and you have different orders available in the option, okay. You have a proton, right, okay. You have an electron and you have an alpha particle, perfect. So we have to compare their de Broglie's wavelength. So, lambda, that is the de Broglie's wavelength, has the formula as h by p. And p is your what? Mass into velocity, the momentum value. But we have to bring this formula in, in comparison with kinetic energy, right? So, let's let's do some, some modification. p is equal to mv. Can I just say that kinetic energy is also half mv square, right? So, I'll modify my formula as in terms of kinetic energy, right? So, if I just multiply and divide by mass, so I'll say this will be like half m square v square by m. And mv whole square, this will be like p square. So, p square by 2m will be my kinetic energy. From here, I can say momentum will be under root of 2mk. Let's put this value in the equation lambda. So, lambda will be h upon, I'll put the value of momentum as under root of 
टू एम इन टू काइनेटिक एनर्जी राइट नाउ दिस बिकम्स वेरी इजी टू कंपेयर सी द क्वेश्चन से इज दैट काइनेटिक एनर्जी इज सेम फॉर ऑल द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ पार्टिकल सो द डिपेंडेंस ऑन काइनेटिक एनर्जी इज गॉन टू इज ऑलरेडी अ कॉन्स्टेंट एच अ प्लैंक्स कॉन्स्टेंट सो आई कैन से दैट माई लैमडा इज ओनली एंड ओनली डिपेंडेंट अपॉन द इनवर्स ऑफ अंडर रूट ऑफ मास राइट ओके ओके नाउ आई हैव टू कंपेयर द मास ऑफ प्रोटोन द मास ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन एंड द मास ऑफ एल्फा पार्टिकल एंड दिस आई नो वेरी सिंपल दैट मास ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन इज गोइंग टू बी मिनिमम राइट एंड देन द मास ऑफ प्रोटोन एंड देन फाइनली द मास ऑफ एल्फा पार्टिकल वॉट इज एल्फा पार्टिकल बेसिकली इट इज अ डबली चार्ज हीलियम आयन राइट ओके सो इफ दिस इज द ऑर्डर ऑफ द मास then lambda is inversely proportional to mass or under root of mass so the order of wavelength is going to be electron will have the highest wavelength then the proton and then the alpha particle so the order is in increasing terms electron proton and alpha particle let's look for the options uh, electron proton electron alpha no 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 alpha has the maximum then proton then electron no exactly reverse electron has the maximum then proton and then alpha option c exactly matching with what we have understood right now so option c is going to be the right answer to this question and with that we conclude this question thank you so here we have an order based question let's see what the question says among lcl becl2 bcl3 and ccl4 the covalent bond character follows the order and you have four different orders okay 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 see you can approach this question either by fajan's rule or or with the help of difference of electronegativity so i am going to follow the concept of difference of electronegativity right so what does the concept says it says the the covalent character in a bond is inversely proportional to difference of electronegativity in between the combining atoms what do i mean to say if there is less electronegativity difference then the bond is going to be more of covalent nature and if there is huge difference of electronegativity then the bond is going to be more of ionic nature and less of covalent nature right so we just need to arrange these atoms lithium beryllium boron and carbon in the order of their electronegativity values so lithium you know it is the first group element and it has a large size and and as you move from from left to right in the periodic table the size of the atom is going to decrease and their electronegativity value increases in a general trend so the order is lithium will have the least electronegativity then you have beryllium then you have boron and then you have carbon right this is carbon oh sorry this is carbon and of course the chlorine is is like 17th group element so chlorine has the highest electronegativity in this order right so now if you if you compare that chlorine and carbon is close in electronegativity values so the difference is less so carbon and chlorine is going to make more of a covalent bond and if you compare lithium with chlorine the electronegativity difference is high so lithium and chlorine is going to make more of a ionic nature of bond so less will be the covalent character so the correct order is going to be lcl will have the least covalent bond nature then you have becl2 then you have bcl3 and then you have ccl4 so this is going to be the right order if you match with the options i can see the same order in option b the minimum is lcl maximum is ccl4 so option b is going to be the right answer to this question and with that we conclude this question thank you so here we have a question on redox reactions let's see let's see what the question says identify the oxidant and the reductant in the following reaction respectively so what basically is an oxidant oxidant is something which is an oxidizing agent right and you know 
ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट ऑक्सीडाइज अदर्स एंड इट सेल्फ गेट रिड्यूस्ड सो आई राइट देयर ऑक्सीडेंट इज समथिंग विच इज गेटिंग रिड्यूस्ड राइट ऑन द सेम पैर बेसिस रिडक्टेंट इज समथिंग विच इज एक्टिंग एज अ रिड्यूसिंग एजेंट एंड रिड्यूसिंग एजेंट reduces others and itself get oxidized so reductant is something which is getting oxidized right okay so i am looking for species which is getting reduced and oxidized respectively fine 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 if you if you just look at the reaction there is a beautiful reaction where we have kmno4 kclh2so4 reacting to form mnso4 k2so4 water and cl2 perfect so i have to look for the oxidant and reductant let's let's go one by one potassium is plus 1 here right and and here also potassium is plus 1 if you look at the product side potassium is again plus 1 here so there is no change of oxidation state in terms of potassium so i am not going to look for it let's go for manganese if i say manganese is x here and oxygen is 4 into minus 2 this is 0 then x comes out to be plus 7 here right mn is plus 7 okay if you look at the product side we have mn here let's calculate its oxidation state x plus sulfate is like so4 minus 2 ion so minus 2 is equal to 0 so x comes out to be plus 2 here so mn is plus 2 perfect manganese is going from plus 7 to plus 2 that means decreasing that means manganese is getting reduced right so if this is getting reduced then according to the concept mn k mno4 is going to be my oxidant right so if if i match with the options k mno4 as oxidant this can be your probable answer k mno4 oxidant yes this can be your answer mnso4 oxidant no 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 this cannot be your answer and kcl no so answer is either option a or option b okay the oxidant part is done let's move on to the reductant part now let me remove all this so that we get some space to write right so what do i have next is kcl potassium is already plus 1 we have already seen this chlorine is minus 1 here right if you move on to the product side you have chlorine here cl2 and because this is homoatomic so chlorine is going to be zero here so chlorine atom is moving from minus 1 to 0 right minus 1 to 0 is increasing it is increasing right so increasing that means it is getting oxidized and according to the concept it is going to act like reductant so kcl is going to be my reductant so if you match with the options kcl is your reductant so option a is exactly matching with what we have calculated so option a is going to be the right answer to this question and with that we conclude this question thank you so here we have a question on ipec nomenclature let's see what the question says which of the following represents the correct structure of the compound with iupec name 36 diisopropyl 26 dimethyl nonane okay okay and if if we look at the options we have option a b c and d four different structures are given to us so before we jump on to the options let's first try to draw the structure using the name given right so this is 36 diisopropyl 26 dimethyl nonane right so non is my word root so let me draw a structure with nine carbon atoms all of them are bond line structures in the option so i'm going forward with that only 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 right i have nine carbon atoms in a chain and at position 3 and 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 perfect nine atoms and i have 3 and 6 as diisopropyl now basically what is an iso group this is this is what your iso is that's how iso look like right this is your iso group where we have slight branching on the second carbon of the chain and you have isopropyl prop is like three carbon and we already have three carbon in this group so this is going to be your isopropyl so if i draw it according to the bond line structure this is going to look something of this kind right so at 3 i have an isopropyl 
and at 6 I have an isopropyl okay this is fine at position 2 and 6 I have dimethyl so at 2 I, I put a methyl here and at position 6 I have a methyl here perfect so my structure should look like this let's match with the options now this is your option A okay first we have to figure out the longest chain so if I if I move from here so 1 2 3 1 2 3 okay so I can I can choose my longest chain and if I move from here 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 okay this is this is the longer part so it has to start from either from here or from here right and according to the lowest locant rule I'll start from this part 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay non a nine atoms nine carbon atoms perfectly matching you have a methyl on 2 and a methyl on 6 this is also fine look at the name once more 2 6 dimethyl non -ane. and we have 3 6 diisopropyl right look at the position 3 and 6 at position 3 you have an isopropyl and at position 6 you have an isopropyl propyl perfectly matching so option a is correct but let's move on to option b c and d as well if you have to look for the longest chain from here 1 2 3 1 2 3 yeah let's let's number this from this side 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh, let's move to this side 6 and 7 right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 can we move a bit longer uh, 1 2 3 yeah yeah we have to start from here rather right this is this is not correct 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 still 8 we have to look for 9 is it possible to stretch it further uh i don't think so i don't think so. here it is octane incorrect let's move to other option option c the longest chain uh it could start from here one two three four five six seven eight and nine okay non in is matching let's look for the substituents you have a methyl at two and ethyl group the name does not contain ethyls so this is not going to be correct move on to option d we have to look for the longest chain i can see one two three one two three one two three everywhere it is three so i can start from any place so i'll i'll say that i'll start from here one two three four five six seven eight or it could be seven eight so the maximum chain is of eight carbon atoms though incorrect so the only option correct is option a so option a is going to be the right answer to this question and with that we conclude this question thank you